Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver Show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Do you feel stuck, silent, and stressed? Is something hurting your heart and soul? Are you burning yourself out? If so, you are in the right place because this is the podcast. People from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy. Let's get started. Hey, welcome back to the Survivor to Thriver show. We've been talking about the excellence mindset versus the perfection mindset. And we started talking about this because we're in the new year and one of the things that is a, that happens for pretty much all of us in the new year uh, or when we are uh, still in the new year energy is that we see visions and goals and dreams. We imagine, dream up new possibilities for how our life can be different, be better in the new year. We create resolutions to achieve those visions and goals and dreams. Uh, But unfortunately, for the vast majority of us, it is also true that those visions, goals, dreams, and resolutions never pan out. They, in fact, just die. Today is uh, the 15th of January, and in fact, today is the very day that about 99% of the resolutions, the goals, the dreams that people have created for themselves for the new year are dead. And if you think about it, that's really, really sad. We're just 15 days into the new year, and 99% of new year resolutions visions, goals, dreams that have already been given up on and put aside and pushed to some back burner, uh, probably never to be um, picked up again. However, like I said, that is not going to happen to us. It's not going to happen to you and it's not going to happen to me because we are growing in our awareness of what are the challenges that can prevent us from achieving our visions, goals, and dreams of staying true to our resolutions and we're going to overcome those challenges Right? We're actually going to transform those challenges into the opportunities that they are. The opportunities to learn and grow. So let's talk about another challenge that can prevent us from achieving our vision, goals, and dreams. That challenge is what I will call the illusion of self-sufficiency. The illusion of self-sufficiency. Now, of course, to a certain extent, we can become self-sufficient. To a certain extent, it is even desirable that we strive for self-sufficiency. However, that desire for self-sufficiency and that belief in our ability to be self-sufficient can become problematic pretty quickly, actually. It becomes problematic when we forget that we are actually all parts of an interconnected, interdependent whole. We are all parts of an interconnected, interdependent whole. Right? Which means that even for me to just be able to survive, even for me just to be able to exist, I depend upon 
other parts, other aspects of the whole, the universe, the world within which I exist. See, like, um, even, even to exist in the context of that I'm alive, that I was born, like, I didn't just pop out of nothing. There were other people involved in in making sure that I got created and born, right? And that I grew up and I'm continuing to grow and, and survive. I need other people to help me be able to live. I need the air that I that I need to breathe a clean air, clean water, food, clothing, shelter. These are all and all of these different things that I need to even just be able to survive. See, they're they're not things that I can achieve or acquire or maintain independently just by myself. How how do I create the air independently that I need to breathe? How do I maintain maintain it? How do I independently like if you think about it truly independently it's like how do I get the food that I need to eat, to live? Or the water? Let alone the clothing, the homes, the, and all the other, um, you know, the gadgets, and the technology, and so on and so forth that I use in my everyday life to make possible the, the different things that I do and the different ways that I am being. It's like I, I cannot achieve it in a self sufficient, independent way. Right? It, it all happens within a context. It all happens within a certain environment, within a certain ecology. And that environment, even that ecology in itself, exists within a, a larger environment, within a larger ecology. Right? Everything in our universe, including ourselves, everything is interconnected and interdependent with everything else in the universe, in the whole that we are all parts of. So in the context of our, our visions and goals and dreams, this is also true, that to be able to accomplish any particular result, See, we depend not just on ourselves. It's not our, the results that emerge in our lives are not just dependent upon my actions, my intentions. There's so many other uh, factors that influence the results that ultimately emerge in my life. From uh, what other people are doing, saying, thinking, to the weather, to the economic uh, conditions of, of the world or, or of the nation or the community that I'm living in, to, uh, I mean, just infinite, infinite uh, factors, some of which I'm aware of and many of which I'm not even aware of that are impacting my life, impacting my ability to achieve certain results um, uh, you know, are, are, are not. So it's like, okay, we have to sort of get ourselves out of the illusion of our own self-sufficiency and be really, really honest with ourselves about, hey, what are my limits? What are the constraints around what I'm capable of impacting and achieving by my own intentions by focusing my own intentions and by taking actions that I can control, that I am capable of directing. What are the limits there, right? And so with that recognition, with that honesty of our own limits, then we need a certain 
openness to the possibility that, hey, what I want may not happen or may not happen exactly as I envision it right now or the way that I would like in an ideal scenario to see happen um, uh, based on my current best understanding of what is possible and what is desirable and what is not. So having that openness to again, we come back to this idea of openness to growth and change and and not um, um, and not being stuck in a perfection mindset where we think there's only one right way of doing things and only one right way of being. Because it's not really even within our control to be able to achieve that kind of perfection or to be able to maintain that kind of uh, that kind of perfection. So if you think about it, we need to develop a certain level of humble mindedness in our pursuit of our visions, goals, and dreams, and resolutions. And when I talk about humbleness uh, or being humble-minded, I'm not talking about putting ourselves down or thinking or believing that we are less than or not deserving or not worth it or any of that kind of disempowering negative uh, self-talk. No. Humbleness or the humble-mindedness that I'm talking about is simply about a recognition that, look, I'm not self-sufficient and that's not a bad thing. It's just part of the reality within which I exist. The reality that everything's interconnected and interdependent. And I can actually find a lot of good in that reality, in that uh, we are all parts of an interconnected, interdependent whole and that we are not fully self-sufficient. You know, one of the one most wonderful things that happens when we develop this kind of humble-mindedness, when we acknowledge that we are interconnected, we are interdependent, we're not self-sufficient, that we actually need other people, not only other people, but that we need everything that exists in our in our world, in our universe, including the different aspects of our environment, the mountains, the trees, the birds, the bees, you know, the air, the water. And it's sort of like has a tendency to help us become more respectful of other people and and other aspects of our environment. These things that we are connected with and that we depend on for our very existence and survival. You know, this kind of humble-mindedness can help you grow a softer heart. So you become more caring, you become more compassionate, more kind, in the way that you relate to the world around you and to other people around you. You don't take them for granted. You realize that, hey, they're making important contributions to my health, to my well-being, to my very survival and existence. And that is precious. So let us all strive to develop this kind of humble-mindedness. And if this is something you find yourself struggling with, please reach out for help and support. And you know I'm one person you can reach out to. Just go to my website at www.academyofthriving.com. Click on the Contact Us page and you'll see how we can connect. So until next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.